right? That okay. wasn't me. Good afternoon. I call to order the uh, Board of Trustees emergency meeting on January 18th, 2023 at one o'clock here in Marks Hall. Uh, the item today is for uh, discussing the park manager. Invocation. I'm getting there. Okay, sorry. And Lewis, will you please lead us in the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance, please? Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together and this opportunity to serve our district and its residents. We ask that you steady us and guide us and help us to make sound decisions in the interest of the park. These things we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay, may I have the roll call, please? Sure, Mary Chandler. Here. Lori Dalton. Here. Kathy Gregory. Here. Pat Lombardi. Present. R Mus Blah, Russell McAllister. Present. Louis Nichols. Here. Sandra Simonich. Here. Rodney Smith. Here. Dwayne Trotter. Here. Okay, uh, the item today is just to discuss the park manager applicants that we received on Monday. Um, we received four, in my opinion, very good applications or applicants. Uh, I thought they all did well in their uh, interviews. Uh, but what we'd like to do today is go ahead and get everybody's opinion on what they thought of the individuals or just start off and say who you would like to make as a selection. Or if we don't want to make a selection, if we go back out and ask for additional applicants. So with that, Lewis, I'll start with you. Well, my after listening and going back over my notes, my I would be in favor of uh, entering an offer to uh, Chris Allen, Chris Shoemaker, the, la the number the fourth candidate. Um, I thought he his experience in administration was superior to everyone else's. His his experience in specifically what we do was quite it was more than anybody else's. And I mean, I don't know what your format is here. Do you want to comment on every one or just what I think is the No, right? I think I think you pretty well covered it. Okay. Mark? Okay. Uh, I I I'm thinking towards Craig, the younger gentleman. Um, and the reason behind that is um, number one, he's he's inexperienced to a point in management. But I think that we can, with somebody like that, that we can mold him into we want into what we want the park manager to, to do. With Chris, I think he already has his image set in concrete. And we wouldn't be able to do a whole lot of molding with Chris. Uh, Craig seems very ambitious, very knowledgeable. I mean, with his education background. He was on the dean's list and then the president's list in college, even though he got started late, later. Um, I have a concern with Chris about if he doesn't like what we're doing and what's going on, we won't have him. He'll up and leave because uh, his record kind of shows that, that he's pretty quick to make up his mind. Uh, because I am sure he has made a lot more money than what we have, what we were looking at paying him, that he would be right at the top of where we would have to offer him. Whereas with Craig, I think we could come down just because of his inexperience. I got the feeling just with Craig that, that he might be a better fit with our office personnel and our maintenance people and, and with everybody. <clears throat> he knew the park, and mainly because he'd been here, his mother owns in the park, mm -hmm. which which is is a plus there. Chris doesn't know the park, so so if if it comes down to a selection, I would definitely be in favor of Craig. Okay, thank you, Russell. All four candidates had different qualities from my pros and cons that I see, but the main thing about one particular candidate is we went out to the Florida special districts to find a district 
manager, which qualified for us in our park. Um, sometimes molding people becomes a problem um, because they don't understand why, what they're being molded to. I'm running my own businesses and stuff. I see somebody who actually already has experience coming in and putting their experience to, to work for all of us, whether it be a month, a day, or a year. This process of hiring people nowadays is a normal activity. So we choose the one that can push us forward, help us, motivate us, and actually apply their knowledge to what we have here. Um, going backwards sometimes takes a lot longer to get going forward. So the Craig Shoemaker would be- Chris. Uh, Chris. 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 Or Sorry. Craig Banner. Now that everybody's correcting me. I love all of you. You're like my mom's. I didn't. <laughs> it was the first. Uh, I think Chris uh, Shoemaker is a person of interest, definitely. Um, if he was to come into my business and wanted a job and I had a place for him, I'd probably put him in there. Um, whether he was with me for a year, two years or something, I could suck all the life out of him for his knowledge. So, and that's what it's all about is not us going backwards by teaching or training somebody or hoping that they'll work with all our employees, but somebody that understands what we already have and is familiar with the laws, the different things that it takes to operate in part. So Chris would be my choice for uh, this if we were making a decision right now. Okay. Maury? Uh, and my, uh, my support is in, is in Chris. I think he brings a lot of experience that we need. Um, and the length of time that he might be here didn't, concerned me as much when I understood why he didn't renew with the company he was at and why he didn't renew. Um, so I don't think longevity there is a big concern. It, it's still a possibility, um, but I agree with, with Russell. Get tap that while we can, while we have access to it. Okay. Mary? Okay. Um. I'm going to try not to be too lengthy here. Um, I've gone through this several times with my pros and cons and uh, what we're looking for. And I'll, I'll just come right out and say my, if we're going to make an offer today of anybody, I'm going to recommend that it be Chris. I do agree with that. Um, I do agree his experience will be good. Um, we don't, I said this yesterday when he was here, we don't know what we don't know. And so bringing somebody in that has never done anything even similar to that means all we're going to teach that person is what we know, and we're not going to get that experience um, that exists. I do have some concerns about him um, and that most of his experience is in much larger places than this, but it's mostly in the, the infrastructure, the roads, the water systems, the sewer systems, the huge capital projects and the financing for those projects, which will be great, but the day-to-day -day, um, running uh, of, uh, if I'm thinking about what we were looking for this person to do, he hasn't done that kind of day-to-day -day stuff. He's had people that do it for him. So I am concerned about that, but I'm, I think, I don't know as a group that we are really still solid on what we even want this person to do. And there's some, some of let him come in, let him see, let him decide what he wants things to look and feel like. But we, we all talked about the needs to get things off our plates and to come into an environment where neighbors weren't going up against neighbors and residents up against residents. And so we had a position to do that for us. Um, but we've not, I, I still think we've got some work to do before anybody starts day one to make sure we set that person up with the best possible success by being clear as to what 
that person's going to do and we are no longer going to do. And I don't think we're there yet. So I am concerned about that, but he's a good candidate. It's exciting to have uh, I, you know, some good candidates to talk about. Um, but as, as uh, of those, I think Chris kind of rises to the top. I have to agree with that. Okay, thank you, Todd. I agree completely with Mary. Um, being a park that hasn't had a park manager and I guess they had one a long time ago, but not having a park manager, we need somebody with the experience of Chris that can get things in the door and get them established to get things at least started. Now, maybe we don't know exactly what we want, but this is gonna be a work in progress. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, my biggest concern with Chris is that he won't, I don't think he'll stick around that long, but if he gets in long enough to get things established and get things rolling the way we want them, with our direction of the board, he'll be the, the man to do it. That's my choice, Chris. Right, Sandy? And I too go along with uh, Todd and Mary and others that have said that uh, with the experience that Chris has that he brought to us, I was very impressed with that. I was worried about how long he's going to stay, but he seems like maybe he's looking for a little niche to settle in, hopefully. and. He was impressed with us, and that's a new point of view. So <laughs> I was, I like that. Um, again, his experience and all that he's going to bring to the table and what he's already done, I I would say Chris is right. Ah. Great. Thank you. Kathy? Well, I feel like a broken record here, but um, <laughs> I did what everyone said. Um, I was especially impressed with Chris Shoemaker because of his experience with grants and securing financial funding that we have maybe never looked at before. Um, you know, we have a lot of growth and planning that we have never had time to do here. We have a 10 property that's sitting there. We're looking at, looking at the surveys that are coming in. Um, you know, people want the outdoor pickleball courts. They want all of these things. Well, how are we gonna pay for it? And maybe we can use him for as long as we're here to tap into resources that maybe we just never heard of before. And when I heard that he was able to do a backdoor way to secure funding from the government, that was like, wow. I mean, that's something that we have never heard from any candidate. And I think why not? So definitely, Chris Shoemaker. Great. And then, uh... I'm of the same opinion. I had based my decision on nine different factors. Uh, one was the overall management, the financial expert on, in developing and managing the budgets, uh, the experience of managing and training employees. I uh, had several of them. The communication skills, which I thought every applicant was very good at yesterday or Monday. Um, the one factor I looked at was the experience in the grant writing. I was happy with that where he went through the back door and got that set in there. Uh, and what I also thought was just watching each one of the applicants, they were all able to think on their feet right when you were popping the questions to them. I was impressed with that. Uh, my eighth item I had on there was the FASD certification. I think everybody in the park was looking for that. Uh, I was happy to see that one individual had that. And the last item, did I already go over grant writing? I already yeah. had the grant yeah. writing in there. So based on that, my decision uh, came right out to having Chris as the number one uh, point process. So what do we have? Eight to one. I, eight. Eight to one. Eight. So can I, can I throw one out? You one more you. thing out? One thing I'd like to say is, you know, or I guess it's more of a question is, what if he doesn't accept our offer with our pay? I mean, I know what was put out there, what we're paying and all that. Because um, I feel there's other valuable candidates here. Can we have a backup so we don't have to come back and have an emergency board meeting or anything? No, that's what we're going to do today. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, well, one, I want to take a vote to see if uh, it, what the vote would be for the number one applicant. There would be Christopher Allen. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and take the vote and then we'll discuss what would the second option would be. 
We have all already. those in favor of uh, Christopher Allen Shoemaker is uh, the nominee for the park managers. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Nay. Well, that's passed eight to one. Okay. And then uh, if he, well, one, we're going to have to go back and write the acceptance letter or the uh, employment that. letter. <laughs> with addressing the salary. Uh, I base the advertisement on 80,000 to 100,000. That was the range, yeah. And basically I've been putting in there for uh, 82,005 to start with the health uh, insurance and, and um, 40 hours a week. I can tell you he makes over $100,000 right now. He sure. does? Yes. But that's not what we're going to offer. I know that. I, I, don't I know that. Offer I know that. Um, you know, and you, you had mentioned, you know, the budgets and stuff. Yes. I didn't see him being able to take a whole lot off my plate. He has not been into the nitty gritty. He's got finance managers and um, everybody that does that for him. And he presents it. So I don't know. He doesn't have QuickBooks knowledge. He's going to have, you know, so. I, when I looked at the, the, um, what he we would probably have him do and what he could take off my plate, the only thing I could see when I kind of looked at that, that he could take off my plate would be, um, the property management, knowing the, all of our buildings and making sure they're adequately insured, making sure they're valued properly, make sure we know what the contents are and we know the value of the contents and the insurance on the contents. That would be something that I would love to pass on to somebody at that level to do. Um, we, um, and anything we need for financing for projects, he would work with the RFPs for that and the bidding for that. And I, you know, uh, we all kind of pick it at that when we're doing it. But as far as the, um, doing all the reporting to the tax collector and doing all of the, um, balancing of the books, making sure things are posted to the right accounts, doing the working with the auditor for accrual based accounting. I didn't see him being able to do any of that. So for that reason, I'm with you on what we're going to really have him do. I think um, I I don't think we should offer him more than eighty two to eighty five. No more than that. No more than that. Right. No more than that. So we're going to offer him for what we feel he's what, worth yes. to us. And Lewis wants. Lewis? Well, two things I want to comment on. One, he's also going to ease your pain at budgeting time. I believe that. How? By help he's 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 said clearly that he's put budgets together. He has taken information from people and rolled it up and spit it out. He has not physically calculated numbers. That's where I gathered that also. Yeah, he had finance directors and people that did that for him and gave it to him to roll up. I think, he, uh, okay, all right. That's my understanding okay. when I- And then you're seconded by other people, so. Yeah. My other comment is, I think offering him at the lower end of our advertising is a waste of time. So do I, I agree. I think I you agree. got, I think, I don't know that you have to offer him the top dollar, but you, I don't think you want to send him to a thing that thinks we, that, indicates we think you're no more experienced than yeah. the other people because he is and right. and i think what he can bring that maybe we've never thought of before is exactly what he's done before he can look at planning yeah. fiscal planning mm -hmm. for this exactly. district which has never mm -hmm. been done because we yeah. don't have time to do it nope. 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 and isn't that what the park manager is supposed to be doing mm -hmm. yeah is to get us into the next level to tackle these problems that we have do not have time to do that's it it's a huge thing. Yeah, I, I think his his body of work swayed me quite a bit over yeah. what I thought about the position because, yeah. you know, I'm sitting here going, oh, God, we're going to get someone to take a bunch of stuff off our plate. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to relieve Russell's in my no. plate as much as we as some of the other candidates would, but he's going to bring things we have no clue mm -hmm. about. And I think that's where the value is in this guy is. Right. This, this is going to be a work in progress it's, when yeah. we get this guy in here. We, again, we don't know exactly mm -hmm. what, we really want him to do, and but we're going to work on this and we'll get this sorted out pretty quick, I believe. Yeah, because I'm not hiring him to dump what I do. Oh, I, off same here. Him. I'm yeah. hiring him for the park to manage exactly and maintain mm -hmm. the park. I mean, I, I didn't. We all are going to yeah. continue doing things, and then he'll eventually come into what we're doing. 
Um, I know he has county experience with different counties, so he's already going to be have that knowledge. Yeah. So if I need that knowledge, I don't have to call uh, somebody else. I won't say who, but I don't have to call somebody else because I can say, would you call so-and-so? So he might not take all our duties off, but I think he'll relieve a lot of our... I think, I think he might teach us, I mm -hmm. think he might be able to teach us how to do it better and more yes. effectively. Yes, that's that's my hope. That's the also. next best thing yeah. to taking it away. Yeah, yep. whether it be budgets or yep. it be public relations yep. or secretary or yep. or even health and welfare, it it's not it's not dumping our workload off on them because that's not going to happen because our workload's been around since 1955, and we just have to have, we're just now putting more effort into it than average. So that's the thing we're looking for somebody to help with the park itself, the infrastructure of this. Mm -hmm. facility and then we'll deal with with all of us um, after the fact and and bring it to the forefront it's it's my opinion that if Dwayne would go in there call the guy and negotiate a salary within the range mm -hmm. and if it ends up at the top of the range it ends up at the top of the range it's worth it to get the guy in here to get things rolling I think so. and, and Mary um, we're we're looking at the money for him from we we set a budget yeah, um the, the budget assumption that went in was 85 and we we've seen based on our experience of candidates and in interviewing that that probably wasn't going to be enough and so that's when we talked about the range um and you know i looked at fully loaded and we had talked about when we put that in the budget that we would fund 50 percent of the cost with our assessments 50% of the cost would come from the um, uncommitted funds that we got when the fire department dissolved. And we would do, we would do that for two years and be able to event because you can't do it in one. And at the end of the two year period, we would know, is this like the best thing we ever did or are we not get it? Is there no value added, which I don't think will ever be the case, but, no. uh, and then it would become a fully funded position going forward in our assessments because it would no longer be any funds to draw some of it from. Um, but I, I, I think we've got some opportunity here to look at, at this. And, and you know, we've, we've got yeah. savings this year because we budgeted as of a 10-1 start date. Yeah. So I, I kind of looked at what we've, what we've got um, for savings this year, but we got to remember whatever we pay them this year, we got to pay them next year yeah. with right. a little bit more because um, but right now, if I, I just, I don't know what he's going to have to give for a, um, a notice. Um, but I just said, if he came, comes in the second pay period in February, um, that gives him time to give a couple, you know, months notice fine. He's going to have to relocate. He's going to have to look for housing. Um, the savings budget savings, uh, would be about fifty six fifty seven thousand dollars $57,000. Okay. So we were going to take 58 from the fire department fund. So if we don't have to tap into that this year, that gives us two more years of being able to subsidize this position while we continue to work through. Why two more? Well, because we'll have what we don't spend this year, this year. which buys us another year on the end. So instead of it being 2023 and 2024, it could be 2023, 2024, and 2025, okay. that we would fund it, okay. subsidize it. So not 100% of it's being passed off to the residents while we, I see, I understand. okay. Um, and, we, and we probably could do it at, at a higher salary. Um, so it's like, I, we just need to decide what we, we would give Dwayne the authority to go out and offer as an initial offer. It, it is nice to know we have that money. We've already set all that up and now we're just, it's, you know, I, 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 my same old spiel, just because you have it doesn't mean you have to spend it. Okay. All right. But we, we have a candidate here that we think will add value. And in order to be competitive and get this candidate, it looks like this is where we're going to have to be. So the fact that we can absorb it in our current structure without looking to get it somewhere else for the next couple of years, we should do it is my recommendation. If we were going to have to find it somewhere because we didn't have it, that would be a whole different story. 
Um, and as much as I'd like to throw this back into the general fund, I don't think that's the right answer long term for the district. The right answer long term is to get somebody that we think is going to be able to turn us around. My question to the board is, do you want a one year commitment, two year commitment, three year commitment? I would ask for a two year contract. I was going to say two years. Uh, do you want a but probationary period can. in there of 90 to 120 days? Yes. Uh, all of the vacations are paid. And that's what we already yep. do our staff. Yep. Uh, the hours, 8 to 4.30. Um, board, salary, he works as much as he works when he's needed. Exactly. There's okay. no hourly. Yep. It's hourly. We need him, we need him. And then the health benefits. He gets 100% medical 100%. and dental, yeah. just like everybody else. That's worth a lot. And if um, he doesn't need it, that'd be better for us. Absolutely. Um, and the start date. Uh, if I remember his resume, it looked like he did not accept the last offer from, it was in Gateway, it was, uh, Sun Lake. Mm -hmm. Sun Lake, so Lake, he's not uh, under contract So I don't with think them. he's under contract. Okay. So we want to look at what's the next pay period, February 6th? Yeah, something like that. And that'll give him time to relocate, which he said he would do. Yeah. Um, not very much. If, if he I said he was available that. immediately, not very much time. Why we that's what I was going to ask. At, at, pay period? Yeah. Well, uh, Sorry. I, for just the payroll purposes, I'd like to keep it on even swing. Yeah, but, but we're gonna I, we're gonna have to do um, the verification. Yeah. The you know so there's the, you're gonna do the ver e yeah, verify. E verify. I mean, there's some right. few things, okay. but we can certainly. And I'm not concerned about the not being in the no. beginning of a payroll period. Okay. Getting him enrolled in the medical insurance that's easy. The only thing that um, he wouldn't be able to enroll in is the. Um, the retirement. the retirement, you have to be here for one full year before you're eligible for that. And I don't think he would, unless we, that's not our standard. So no, I don't think we should no, go I outside of that. that. Um, but if he stays yeah. for two years, he can. On the, in the second year, he's second eligible year. to. to um, incentive. Yeah. We're not giving him a car or allowance no. or anything. So no. Is there anything else you want me to bring up from the negotiations? I'll send out the letter to the other applicants. The, the 90 to 120 day, um, that's a probationary period, but it, does that also give him an opt-out clause or is it only us? No, I only for us. And I think, yeah, the 120. Yeah. Yeah, because if he's not performing, I don't want to keep him here for any longer. When right, but I didn't know if we wanted to give him an opportunity if he doesn't think he's a good fit to excuse himself. I'm just asking. Yeah, really. I don't, I don't, I don't think you get your permission to excuse yeah, him. I don't know how okay. finding. Um, right. Does his insurance start when he comes in the door? Uh, it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would. would think so. It'd be great if he didn't need it, but. Well, that's the questions I'll ask, but is there anything else well, that I, don't I should be looking at? I don't think we can ask him that, do we? You can't ask him if he has family he needs to insure. We just give him what he's well, eligible right. for. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. So what are we going out with for starting salary? I'm going to start off with the 82.5 and we'll just negotiate. And I don't think I want to go any higher than 88. I think we do. I would go. I, would go. I, I think we want 95. To I'm thinking starting well, it. I don't, I, yeah, would, I, was, I don't have a problem going higher. Honestly, don't. We're going to have to. Well, let, let's start low and then we'll just negotiate to what he thinks he's going to want. And if he's like 110,000, uh, this is like, so odd no, because I'm sorry, can watch let's this. go back to 82. Oh, okay. I know. It's like, we'd saying, know if he was. It's being in the other team's home. No, not necessarily. He, we wouldn't know. Okay. Hey, Chris, well, you're don't, don't in, we have in, to give Dwayne the, the authority, though? Yeah. For him to negotiate he say? if he oh, says in this meeting he's going to go to 88 and that's it and we all go yep that's good if well, he says 89 then his hands are tied we've tied well, his no hands. i'll, I'll so. go to what we actually have budgeted for the yeah. full okay. hundred thousand but your goal in my mind mine is less than a hundred thousand bucks okay that that works 
you going to do this through letters or you're going to do it through a phone call or uh the first one's going to be phone call good uh, okay I just didn't want to waste then, more time. And then and back then, yeah. it up in writing yeah. with what was then we'll have discussed. To, right, we actually have to. And then put a uh, yeah. The second thing I want to talk about, if we go this way, is the employment letter. Do we want to write the employment letter or have an attorney write the employment letter that has all the nitty gritties of taxes and all that kind of stuff? The, the contract, you mean? The contract. I would, I would let the attorney write the contract. Um, we've never asked Mark to do an employment contract before, so we would need to tap into somebody in his firm that does employment. Do okay. I have to use him? No, you do not. Thank and, you. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, we need, time, we need it in a timely fashion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nope, I don't think we have any yeah. requirements. Good, because there's a, uh, a free consult with another attorney that is nothing but employment letters. Perfect. So I will talk to that. And if it's exorbitant, I go back to our attorney. Okay. I don't want to spend any more money than I have to. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Get her done. Yeah. With that, I'll adjourn the meeting at 1.30. Wait, wait. I thought we were, gonna, were we doing a second choice? No. Do we, do we, if no. he, if he flat out refuses flat the offer, refuses. there's no way we can negotiate a salary where, where we convene and we're back to ground. And we can we put this back, back in zero meeting. We can, can put this back that. out too for, for, to try. You know, they would have to all resubmit yeah. their applications yeah. again. As soon as the second advertisement went out. It'd be like, it'd be like turning the wheel again. Yeah. I just can't go negotiate straight down the list. And I don't know that you. I mean, I all uh, the other candidates were good and everything, but from what we're talking about, what everybody's saying here, if we're going to jump on somebody that's not as qualified as we think we won't, just because they need to reapply and come in here with, with everything else, just like anybody new would. <clears throat> I think we should put it back out there if we have to and mm -hmm. make it all start again. We've already done it once with Indeed. You can... So, you can put an, an item on the agenda for the next board meeting mm -hmm. to discuss another candidate and a position that you'd like to, that you think we should consider. You can start it over at that if time. If we need to, offering that person to. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Wait, so you don't have to go back to square one. You go to the next board meeting and say. It's. You, you can bring it up the discussion and then we discuss it. You can bring it back up and start it with what you want to start with. If we, well, because doing you can email us all and here. tell us if Chris accepted. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I just want to see like another six weeks go by. Mm -hmm. I, we got, yeah. We got un, unfortunately, viable, that's the viable process. candidates in front of us. Yeah. They're different, but still viable. That's, that's what I thought too. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get different things from each of them. Okay, any further discussion? And with that, I'm going to adjourn this meeting at 1.34. Turn your mics off.